Hi guys, it is a cloudy, a beautiful nonetheless spring day here in Austin, Texas on the rock and while the sounds of uh, my buddy's fossil fuel powered tractor uh, destroying a beautiful field of wildflowers in the background uh, lullabies us shall we say, the sound of burning fossil fuels lulls us into the stupor that we have entered as, as a planet. Uh, I want to continue my rant. This is like part three of a rant. This is my evolving rant that has now turned into rant number three. But I just finished ranting it a couple of minutes ago about the complete lack of mystery of chemtrails. Uh, but you can go see that rant about where's the big mystery in chemtrails, I'll probably title it. Uh, but towards the end of that rant, what I got onto was the whole subject uh, that, that, that could have as much to do with chemtrails as, as so many other subjects. And that is the apathy that people have. The, the, the denial and the apathy are, you know, are as big uh, enemies possibly the number one uh, biggest problem facing this planet on, on one level is the absolute comatose uh, denial and apathy of, of, of people who have this information available to them and just have, they just don't care to hear it. They have zero interest. The whole subject uh, of the end of Western civilization and the collapse of this uh, society and this civilization and this entire planet holds no interest to the vast majority of, of Earthlings. Uh, and so when the, the, this information, this jaw-dropping information is released, and I'm, not, and I'm not talking about the wacko conspiracy theorists uh, you know, such as such as the guy in front of you, the idiot in front of you, Alex Jones, David Icke, all the guys, you know, the usual band of, of, of wackos. Even when they're proved, when history shows that they were dead center on target, which it has done over and over again, uh, and, and, and is fully admitted in the, in the mainstream media, people still don't care. You know, these, these bastards, you know, whether it's chemtrails or you know, it's blowing up the buildings in, uh, in, in broad daylight in New York City, uh, perhaps, and this is what I've been talking about, I can't believe here it is, 2012, and I'm still up on this rock yakking about uh, September 11th, 2001 and about blowing up buildings uh, in broad daylight. And this opens up this discussion, which is, which is the discussion is, is, is about apathy and denial and the refusal of people to, to admit to themselves where we have come and where the police state and the destruction of our civil liberties uh, and the U.S. Constitution, the point it has reached, their absolute denial, uh, that even when it is admitted, uh, they don't hear it. That's the subject, but as the example, I am going to use good old September 11th, 2001, the attacks on the World Trade Center and particularly building Seven, the great mystery of Building Seven. I, I, I don't want to spend 20 minutes on telling you the whole thing, but about a quick recap: Building Seven. Just in case you live under a rock and have never heard of Building Seven, or, or, or you've forgotten about it. what it was, is a 47-story uh, skyscraper that sat right next to the World Trade Centers. You know, let's call them Buildings One and Two, the big guys. I think they were like 110 stories. But Building 7, I believe, is 47 stories. So anyway, when these planes hit the big towers and caught on fire, and as the official story has always been, right up to this day, that the jet fuel in the planes on whatever, what story were they, were they on? Like the 
80th floor or whatever, wherever, smacked him into that. The heat from all of this burning jet fuel and planes and stuff collapsed the buildings and they just happened to fall almost at free fall and landed directly in their footprint, which is so patently absurd on every single level. But I'm not here to talk about buildings one and two. I'm here to talk about building seven. Building seven was a building that, that stood next to these two buildings. Building seven was never hit by an airplane, okay? No airplane ever hit this 47-story modern skyscraper in downtown Manhattan. What did happen, however, is some of the fire, since the buildings were so close, some of the fire from the big buildings jumped the alleyway over to Building 7 and got in, uh, I don't know what floor, I think it was around the 35th floor, but it's really kind of irrelevant. So anyway, there was this fire going on up on about the 35th floor. Well, with all the shit going on in, in Buildings 1 and 2, the mass pandemonium, uh, you know, 300 firefighters had already died in there. Uh, they were evacuating, you know, probably half of Manhattan, getting them away from there. They really, the, the, the firemen just couldn't deal with the, uh, the fire on the 35th floor. They, they didn't want to risk, they, they, everyone had gotten out of Building 7. There were no lives lost, thank God, in, in, the, in the Building 7 thing. The, everyone was out. And they didn't want to run the firemen up there. This is all logical. This is the official story. But what happened was, is that Building 7, which never had an airplane full of jet fuel in it, it had a, a small splatter fire going on up there. It, too, collapsed. Free fall, in a matter of seconds, a 47-story building collapsed. Free fall landed directly in its footprint, just like the, the towers one and two had done earlier that day, a few hours before. A carbon copy, carbon copy demolition. Obvious inside job demolition that they were blown up from the basement and fell into the basement where the explosions began. Nothing to do with the damn airplanes. Nothing. Uh, clearly. But the same thing happened to Building 7. And so the official story has always been from September 11th on is the absurd contention that this little fire up on the 35th floor of this modern skyscraper, the heat from it collapsed a 47-story skyscraper directly into its footprint. And I always thought that this was the official story. I mean, uh, how did this get past my radar? I, I always thought, and as far as I know, a lot of people still believe, and, and for all I know, it still is the official story that this little fire up there did this to this building. But what I found just a few weeks ago when I was when I was in Ecuador playing around on YouTube, I stumbled across this video uh, of, the, uh, of the owner of Building 7, an interview with this man. And before I tell you what this man said, I will tell you what us conspiracy factists have, uh, have always said is that Building 7 was clearly, as was the Towers 1 and 2, clearly a demolition. It was an inside job. It was a, it was a controlled demolition from the basement. And uh, furthermore, it was the, the, the theory has been that the owner of the building, this I think his name is Fred Silverstein, but I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe his name is Silverstein, ordered the demolition. Now again, it gets to a deeper theory. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that he was that he made millions and millions and millions of dollars off of his insurance policy by conveniently being able to destroy his his 47 story building. But I don't know. I haven't spent the time researching that. It sounds it, it sounds logical to me. My guess is that Mr. Silverstein did indeed 
Uh, however that building fell, uh, he probably did indeed end up pocketing millions and millions and millions of dollars out of this, uh, out of this scene of destruction that he benefited tremendously. It was, it was the best thing that ever happened in the man's life. But anyway, for years, these were these wacko conspiracy theorists talking about this was a controlled demolition ordered by, ordered by Mr. Silverstein so he could make a bunch of money. And, you know, it had nothing to do with this little, this little fire. Uh, but anyway, I guess it was about five years ago, judging by the date of this video, I found this old Alex Jones video. And there's several videos on YouTube that have been around for five years. It's completely under my radar with hundreds of thousands of hits. It's an interview with the owner of Building 7. I, I might guess it was an interview in 2007. So six years of listening to this horseshit story about the collapse of Building 7. Uh, guess what Mr. Silverstein admitted to looking straight into the camera like I'm looking into this camera. He admitted that he blew up that building. Yeah, he fully made me look right at Yeah, I blew it up. He used the word, he uses the word pull. You know, this word pull, that he pulled the building. He decided to pull the building. Since the fire department wasn't able to put out the fire on the 35th floor, instead of just letting the fire burn out and do what it may and let his sprinkler system take whatever, he decided to pull the building, and, uh, and, and clearly, if he, he goes, I decided to pull it, and a few minutes after I decided to pull it, it fell at free fall speed directly into his own footprint. I don't see where the argument is about the definition of the word pull in this. Uh, my, my guess is there probably was somebody, maybe Mr. Silverstein himself, that pulled something a trigger to set off the explosive charges that, that uh, demolished Building 7. It probably looked extremely similar to the gadget that somebody pulled to blow up the Towers 1 and 2. If, if you look at the collapse of, of those towers and then you look at videos of the collapse of Building 7 and then you look at videos of a bunch of other controlled demolitions, they will all look exactly the same because that's what buildings that are blown up from the basement look like in a controlled demolition. Oh, I, can't, I can't even believe I'm still, having, I'm still having this discussion. But, so there it is. The information has been out there for five years that essentially what uh, Mr. Silverstein, the owner of this building, uh, was admitting to was that these nutcase, what you're hearing, folks, I hope, is a, is a fossil fuel burning tractor getting ready to explode. Fortunately, there's no 47-story building on this property. Take, now this I call this the revenge of the wildflowers. But anyway, I, I digress. Uh, I love these sound effects, however. It probably sounded a lot like the, the the popping of the explosive charges that brought down all three of these buildings. But anyway, <laughs> so Mr. Silverstein is admitting that all these wacko conspiracy theorists were exactly right in their theory in their, that their theory has turned out to be a historical fact at least as far as building seven was concerned now if i had been the reporter and the owner of building seven after after six years of this horse shit official story about 9-11 had just admitted to me that he blew up that building. My, my question or my comment might have been, I just did not realize that buildings came prepackaged with demolition charges all set in them. That, that the owner of a building could decide 
at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon to have a controlled demolition of their building, and they would and they would get their demolition within the hour. I, my guess, it would take weeks, if not months, to set all of this up. Well, well, you know, with all of good God, with the actual setting up the charges, getting all the permits, getting all the people and all of their shit moved out of the offices, getting all the neighbors protected, you know, it, it, it's this a major hassle setting up. And how did he, how was he able to do it uh, with about an hour's notice? It's clear how. Mr. Silverstein was able to do this with an, with an hour's notice. It's because the charges, the explosive charges to bring down Building 7 were set there weeks, if not months or even years in advance. How about that uh, for a brilliant piece of logic? That is how he was able to do it. And when you look so there you have the conspiracy theorist proven that Building 7 was an inside job. Building 7 was, what, 100 feet away from Buildings 1 and 2, and they had exactly identical collapses into their footprints. Building 7 was an inside job. It, that this has now been admitted to it as a statement of historical fact. This is no longer a conspiracy theory. Building 7 was a controlled demolition ordered by the owner of the building in an inside job. And the obvious tremendous jump in us conspiracy factists is as goes Building 7, so went Buildings 1 and 2. It is clear as Cairo syrup, as my grandma would say. Clear as Cairo syrup uh, that this is what happened. And now I predicted in my last rant that the people behind chemtrails are, are imminently ready to come forward and admit that chemtrails are real. You know, guys, I don't know if, if these evil bastards who blew up uh, the World Trade Center buildings one and two are ever gonna come clean with it. It wouldn't surprise me, you know, 10, 20 years from now, and they just look right at the damn camera and, and admit that it was all an inside job. They did, hell, they've admitted that the Gulf of Tonkin and therefore the entire Vietnam War was an inside job. They, they pretty much admitted that Pearl Harbor was an inside job. Hell, the USS Maine was an inside job. You know, they probably will throw out, they'll just admit it. Uh, in a few more years that 9-11 that was an inside job. And it makes me wonder, will anybody give a shit? Nobody gives a shit that a few uh, wacko conspiracy theorists have been telling the truth about 9-11 uh, for the past 11 years. Maybe My guess is that not a whole lot of people will give a shit when it's plain old mainstream media reported information. That people just don't care. They've got other things to deal with. They have, you know, they have their tractor problems. They have wildflowers that need to be mowed down with fossil fuel burning tractors. That's what they're thinking about. Uh, my buddy up on his tractor, he's not thinking about this. He's never, he, he's probably, he's, he's never thought about building seven one minute in, in his entire life. This is one of my best friends, the, you know, my landlord. <sighs> so there you go. That's that rant. I don't know. I don't really know what the point of it all was. I'm just pointing out, you know, this is just more evidence. All of my rants are, you know, as I, what I'm doing is, is chronicling the downfall of, of the civilization as we slouch closer and closer to Armageddon. Bye guys.